Hey gang, it's Will from Tested. And it's Norm from Tested. Norman Chan. Uh, we're about to try Star VR, which is Starbreeze Studios' uh, surprise VR headset. Super surprise. Who who just comes to E3 is like, hey, we have a VR headset and a game. You should come check it out. So um, we're promise, both going to demos. Yeah. It's a Walking Dead theme game. They have the license. Overkills the Walking Dead. Let's go. Let's go to it. Wide FOV 5K. Let's do it. So this is Elmir Listo, the global brand director at Starbreeze Studios. And Elmir, you guys uh, surprised everyone at E3 by announcing Star VR, which is uh, a new HMD, virtual reality HMD. Now, this is a partnership with, uh, or you guys acquired Infinite Eye, developer of the headset before. Can you tell me why you guys did this and but what makes this technology different? Yeah. We did it because the, the virtual reality race has just begun. Uh, there are a couple of other helmets out there, but we're super confident in our helmet with the 5K resolution, with uh, 210 degrees, because most other helmets have the 100 degrees, right? So you feel that the view is pretty shallow, right? You're feeling like you're blinded. But with our experience, it opened up and you get the whole peripheral vision. 75% of the human vision is contained in that. So the experience becomes something completely different. You're suddenly very immersed in the world. Yeah, let's talk about this headset, because it's interesting. Uh, the headset looks different because you have these two, basically, uh, 25, 60 by 14, 40 panels. Like, you're at the highest resolution smartphone panels, side by side, this way, horizontally. So you have a wide field of vision, 210 degrees. You can peer your eye all the way to the right. How did you get this, the optics, the lenses, to work so you can actually see left to right and up and down? That's a really good question. Lionel, you should help me answer this. Let's jump in. Yeah, Lionel, so you guys, when you designed the headset, how did you get the, the optics and the lensing to work so you can see the entire 210 degrees? Uh, yeah, I cannot disclose a lot, uh, but uh, uh, the lenses were made really optimized for this angle, and this uh, field of view was required. So that's all I can say, I guess. So that's, that was a big goal, right? You guys, you want a wide field of view, both horizontally, you said 130 degrees vertically. It's essentially a 5K resolution display. It's a lot of pixels to push. Uh, so what, what frame rate are you guys running this at? You guys? Uh, for now, it's steady 60, but we can go even higher. It's just because the display are 60, we stay at 60. The, yeah, the aim is for us to find a new benchmark for virtual reality, right? right? So we're at the beginning of the virtual reality race, and us acquiring the guys at Infinite Eye just showcases that Starbreeze Studios is, uh, is transforming and not only being a software developer, which we've been for the last decade, we're also going into hardware, right, with the virtual reality. And the reason why is because it's the future of gaming. Yeah. That's why, because the experience is completely immersive. And that benchmark you talked about, you want to start at that wide field of view, positional tracking. You're using an interesting system. It's, it's a camera pointing at fiducial markers, basically, these QR code markers that you can put on not only the headset, but also on accessories as well. Yeah. Easily, you can track any object with this system. Uh, we are working on several different uh, solutions, and uh, this is uh, the one we had now. So yeah. this is the current prototype. It may not end like this, but this is kind of the performance benchmark. You want to be as good as this. The demo is really cool because you have a wheelchair here because in the game, you're also sitting in the wheelchair. You're being handed a shotgun. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a pretty physical experience. Is that what you imagine when games being developed for the system? That kind of integrated experience? Yeah, the cool thing about virtual reality is that we've just seen the start of it. This experience that we have here, in three years' time, this might be nothing in comparison to what we're able to achieve by then. And uh, with The Walking Dead specifically, we're making a Walking Dead game for PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and PC uh, on Steam. And this is a separate demo that we made for this and a separate game entirely. But the interesting thing is that we have the Walking Dead franchise and are closely working with Robert Kirkman. So to get game developers on board with your platform, with your headset, now you, I imagine you have you know, positional tracking parity with the other headsets, and, but you have the option of controllers, um, but you have the wide field of view. How hard it would be for developers to adapt their games to work with Star VR? What do you think? I think we are open to um, to discuss with Valve to uh, support OpenVR, uh, SteamVR API. Um, yeah, yeah, I agree. I mean, uh, we, we're uh, completely uh, in line with whatever Valve are doing because we support them. You know, we think what they're doing is great. Uh, we, we like the competition. We think you know, it strengthens us, what we're trying to do, and it's interesting seeing what direction they're going to take with their virtual reality. Mm -hmm. And we'll definitely be on OpenVR 
our biggest game, Payday 2, so far, is on Steam. It's one of our right. most successful games ever, and we're, we have a very closely knit relationship with the guys at Valve. So, it's it's exciting times, definitely. Yeah, and it really seems like you want to push for developers to embrace that wide field of view, right? Yeah. 210 degrees field of view. Um, ergonomically, is this? I mean, this is a prototype now. How much more work are you guys iterating uh, to, to get this to something that's going to be consumer ready? That's a really good question. I think we, we have, I mean, at this stage, as you're saying, we're still in a research and development phase. Yeah, what you're seeing now hurry. is a pro, yeah, we're we not in a hurry. To show what yeah. we can do best, so we're not in a hurry and we'll develop the everything we, uh, we want to do before any uh, dev kit release. Uh, yeah. The great thing with us at Starbreeze is that we are an independent developer. That means that we take our time. We don't have any deadlines to set that we've announced so far anyway, right? So we, we'll, we're going to take our time, make sure that this is going to be as good as possible. And the demo you have now, it's, it's four minutes long. You imagine you be building full games for this? A full length game sometime in the future? Of course. Uh, we're still in a phase with a virtual rally where we don't know yet how long a game should be. You know, how right. long can you be in the in the experience? Uh, I don't know if you've tried the Valve demos, but uh, some are short, some are longer, right? right? And ours is four minutes, as you're saying. We'll definitely find a right time for that. But that's the exciting thing with us as well. Not only are we a hardware manufacturer now, we're also a software manufacturer. So there's no middle management. Our team works together with the team in Starbase Paris, and we'll make sure we provide the best experience as possible. Any interesting things that in your testing, working on the prototype, making this demo that you find that you can do because you have that wide field of view, like you know, in the design, in the sound, and in the, the graphics that makes takes advantage of that. We have uh, our own uh, engine called the Valhalla, so uh, we're working with that in order to making sure that you have as cool of an experience as possible. With the peripheral, I mean, with the peripherals as well, you go to the next level. Having, in this case, it's a shotgun. In the future, it might be something else. Right. Who knows what we'll do, right? And yeah, it's it's basically us being here at E3 is showcasing the VR helmet at this current stage because it's still in a, in a prototype phase and showcasing what you can do. Just giving a glimpse of the future of VR. And I think, yeah, we have a long way to go still, but that just makes it more exciting. It's a really interesting glimpse and a really unique perspective on this hardware design. Thank you so much, Amir. Thank you. And thank you, Lionel, for talking with us. Thanks. OK, Norm, uh, that was one of the better first time new headset demos I've had. Not up there with the Vive, but but close, you know, OK. Um, I think it was really interesting. So talking to their global brand manager, one of the engineers from Infinite Eye, who they acquired, uh, this clearly seems like a prototype. This is not what they want to release. Uh, the way, the reason they're making a headset is that they want to own the pipeline. They want to own the hardware and the software so that when they're making a game, because they're a game developer, they don't need to say, hey Valve, could you give us these controllers or give us these features? But that also means that they're making a game specifically for whatever design they want to do. Right. Uh, they, they mentioned the word benchmark a lot, meaning that they want to develop a hardware experience that was going to be their, what they thought was like their benchmark for VR. So they have a lot of good numbers. They're talking about a 5K resolution and two, what, 240 degree field? 210 degree field of vision, uh, <laughs> whereas in the Oculus, for example, the Rift and also in the Vive headset, you have two screens that are oriented this way. Yeah. Here you have two screens that are oriented this way. Now, if that is what they're going for, and that seems like their YFOV you know, is a, their benchmark, uh, it's heavy. So, but the big difference is, unlike the Oculus or the Vive, where you have lenses in front of you and it, you kind of get an FOV like a like a diver's mask. Mm -hmm. With this, you actually do have like I didn't notice tops or bottoms or sides yeah. when I was in the headset. The the glass of the screens is yeah. right up against your eyes. You can peer, like you're in sitting that demo, which is like you're a wheelchair because you know they designed it so there's no walking around. Someone's holding the wheelchair, shaking it. But even if without head movement, and you can do some positional movement, you can like look to the corner of your eye and see something in the game, so, react to sound cues. From a game design perspective, that's really interesting. That was that was really there was a real sweet spot for the optics for me. As soon as the headset drooped a little bit down, right. you probably noticed me pushing it up throughout yeah. the demo. Yeah, like it, everything got fuzzy um, and almost looked like the lenses were fogged. But it, if you push back up, then they were right. Yeah. So getting the sweet spot on optics that big for that big of a FOV right. is going to be hard. Um, and I'm I'm not like I'm not sure that they can get the weight and the and the optics and all that stuff right. 
And I'm, I didn't realize that they were making this only for their own games. That That is uh, concerning to me, to say the well, least. Well, I asked them directly about, you know, what it means to for, for other developers to port to this, <laughs> right? If someone is making a VR game where you don't need accessories, just need head tracking, uh, is it just a matter of switching FOV, rendering higher resolution? And they said, you know, they're going to work with Valve. They're supportive of Valve's Valve standards, and they have their game on Steam. It was a very non-answer. Are they working uh, with Unity and, and Epic for they, Unreal? They have their own engine. It's the Valhalla engine. Oh, so, so okay. Nothing to formally announce. It really did seem like they wanted to show the benefits of this wide FOV. But we know that there are limitations, like you said, the optics being having very precise location for a sweet spot, mm -hmm. uh, there are trade-offs. Did they talk about the QR code? Like right now they're using QR codes and cameras to do the optical tracking in addition to an IMU. Yeah. Uh, is that the long-term goal or is that they just didn't say a, that the was prototype? The long -term goal. That is just for the prototype okay. right now. Uh, I think the surprising thing is that with this fiducial market tracking, it's not bad. No, like, it was really good. I was able to aim with that shotgun with these two cubes around it for the marking. I was actually able to aim down the site and get accurate firing. How, how did it compare to the Morpheus London High stuff that we saw at GDC? So did, what was any... poor was the hand rendering in the yeah. game. So if you move the shotgun like this, the virtual hand modeling doesn't track your hands, so you look like ghost hands that are floating up that's, there. That's the thing I noticed immediately. And there was no, like, you couldn't interact with the world with that shotgun by swinging around. So I had real problems with registration, left eye, right eye, as I got something close to my head. So when I pulled the shotgun in to, to shoot down the, the yeah. site, I, I everything kind of, just jumped out of whack just enough that it kind of threw me off. It wasn't a motion sickness thing, it was just a little bit uncomfortable. I think the big takeaways are, you know, wide of 3 has really good benefits, but there are clear trade-offs that they have to work on in the hardware. Yeah. And also positional tracking, good positional tracking of an accessory, whether it's wand controllers, triggers, or a physical shotgun, it really enhances the experience. You know, the, the other big thing I took away from this is that phys any physical sensation you add when you're in VR, the guy sitting there shaking the wheelchair when you were in it, yeah. hugely effective, yes. really, really scary. Yeah. Um, and when somebody reached out and grabbed me on the shoulder at the end of it, I think I'm gonna pay somebody to stand in my room and just you know grab me when something happens on screen when I have VR in my house. Different um, levels of immersion. That's Star VR, we're glad we got the demo. Really interesting stuff, we'll have more stuff from E3. 2015 on test.com subscribe to our YouTube channel and we'll see you guys next time. See ya. Bye.